from Susan. Have you ever wanted to take ordinary felt, this floppy kind, as you can see it doesn't even pick up when I pick it up, it's real soft and wiggly, and make it into this stiff, hard type of felt that you can do bead embroidery on? I've had so many comments on, can't I make regular felt stiff that I could use for bead embroidery? And I thought, why not? You probably can. I've had so many experiences with ordering felt online and I thought it was this harder, stiffer felt. And instead it was this soft, floppy felt that wouldn't do anything for me. If I put a few beads on it, this would just kind of whimper away. Well, I tried experimenting with things that I had around my studio and I was very surprised how simple and successful I was with just different items that I've had. So let me show you what worked for me and what didn't. So let's get started. Now the first product I'm going to try is Pledge Revive It Floor Wax. I've read online, some people say they use this, but they didn't give me any instructions. So I thought I'd just try it the simplest way. This is definitely a household size brush type of a job. You don't want to do this with a tiny brush unless you want to be there all day. You could probably almost spray this on, but I'm afraid it would clog my sprayer or almost pour it on. The felt seems to wick up any product I put on it. So we're just coating it now. You see it's very wet. It even has some sparkly bubbles on it. But I will let this dry. Now I do not want this to adhere to the foil. About three to four hours after it sits like this, I'll flip it over and put it on the other side of this foil or another piece of foil that I have that's dried because as you can see, the product has seeped right through. We've got it so wet, but I don't want it to adhere to the foil. I do not want foil adhered to my backing. And I found it very simple to just flip this over. After. It's not something you have to watch and it'll get like a crust on the top so it's kind of dry. So when you do flip it over, it won't stick on the other side of the foil. Now the results of the Pledge Revive It were very good. I got a nice stiff felt. It was really easy to bead through. I had no problems and I want you to see how even though this has a lot of weight on it because it's got lots of beads and a rhinestone, it's still not bending. So it's nice and stiff and I even did another piece that has some shibori ribbon on it and that stayed nice and stiff. It doesn't seem to flex over on me. But you could always reinforce this with a piece of cardboard in the back if you needed it to be stiffer. But I still think this was just as good as the stiff felt that I've purchased. Now I'm going to try this Elmer School Glue. I'm sure the regular glue would probably work too, but we're going to see how this works. And I'm just going to pour some in a little cup here. And I'm going to add a little bit of water to this. I just think it'll make it spread and penetrate the fabric better if it's more liquidy because that's so thick that I'm afraid that may coat it more like a glaze and then I won't be able to get my needle through it. So I want it kind of liquidy like the floor polish was. With this one, I'm going to do the same thing. And when I flip it over, I take it from this side and flip it to the other side of the foil or put it on another piece of foil. That seems like a nice watery consistency. I'm going to saturate this fabric. And since it's so wet, I won't have to do both sides the same as the floor wax. I just saturated it. Wow, that is just absorbing this. It looked like I had so much and I'm not sure I have enough. I just want to make sure it's totally saturated and that there's lots of glue into the fabric. Now here is the white glue felt and it's nice and stiff once again and it was real easy to bead through. I really liked this product. I was very surprised. I didn't think the white glue was going to be easy to sew through but it was just as nice as the floor wax. So if you don't have anything else around, just the regular old household white glue seems to do the trick. And I've got a heavy rhinestone here and lots of little crystals and it's only slightly bending. So it, it held pretty good. Now here's one of the items most of us crafters all have in our home. And I'm going to give this a try. I'm going to just use, because it's very thick, you can see it's like a heavy cream consistency and then I'm just going to add maybe one or two parts water. I want to make it very watery so we'll add almost two parts water. I know Mod Podge is so thick that it'll just turn it into vinyl and make it really hard to stitch through. So the whole trick is not to make it heavy, too thick to stitch through. 
We want it real watery. And there we go, we've got a nice mix there. And you can see how watery that is. Now this is the Mod Podge, which I was convinced I was not going to be able to bead through. I thought this was going to be too stiff, but it's actually nice and stiff as you can see on the sides. It um, held its weight pretty well. It still flops over a little bit on me, but I was had no problem beading through this. And remember, once again with this one, I added a lot of water because I was worried that it was going to make the felt too difficult to sew through, kind of plasticky, but it didn't. It actually worked quite well. Now something most of us have around the house is craft paint. I'm not sure if this will work. I don't have white paint, but I have blue paint and I don't have any more blue felt. So I'm going to just use the blue on the white. Let's see how this works. I have no idea what this is going to do, but you know when you're in desperate times and you just need something? I'm going to thin this paint out a lot. So I'll put about one part paint two parts water because I know the paint will thicken it for no question but I just don't want it to be more like a leathery rubbery also because the felt absorbs so much wow it's actually turning real blue easy to tell where I did this one Here's the one that I really thought was not going to work out at all. This was just regular craft paint. Now it did come up a little blobby and that was operator error. That was totally my fault. I didn't really mix it well. Next time I would mix it for a lot longer. I only mixed it for exactly what you saw on camera. <laughs> I was just being kind of carefree with it. A lot of water in it so it's a little bit softer but it's still nice and rigid and you can see how it bleep through to this side but nobody's going to ever see this side anyway also what i was really happy with the paint was to know if i don't have a color felt that i want this is a whole lot easier than taking a magic marker to dye the felt i never thought about painting it my husband came up with the idea of just try paint it stiffens everything and i thought oh i'll never be able to use it but it really worked quite well i was very surprised the next thing I'm going to try is this Minwax Satin Water Base. This is just a varnish. I'm sure you could use the shiny one too. I happen to only have the satin. And I've poured some of it into this cup because it's kind of thick. It's more like a heavy cream consistency. And Now, here was a fail. I started to put the Shibori ribbon on here and I just I couldn't take it anymore. Um, it, I could sew through it, but my fingers were killing me. This was the Min Wax Varnish, and it made this like sewing through plastic. I had to use a thimble to get this through, and at that point my needle bent so many times, and I just said, forget it, we're going to scratch this piece off. The Min Wax Varnish was an epic fail. I would not bother with it. Now, this one I th I'm convinced has to work. This is just liquid starch. You can buy this in any food store. We're just going to use it straight out of the bottle because it's so liquid. I don't think there'll be an issue. It's very inexpensive. I so I'm just going to paint this on here and see what it does. This was the one I actually thought would work. No question was liquid starch. It was real easy to find in the food store. It was real inexpensive. And of course it worked real nice and stiff. It was really, really easy to sew through. I would definitely use the starch again. I was actually really happy with that. And here's my last try. This one is faultless spray starch. I think any spray starch would probably work. I have no idea if this is going to do it. I think it would probably do the same as the bottle, but it does have a different look to it. And I don't know if it's easier to work out of the can. It was easier. I'll give it that. But it's very foamy, so I'm going to let it settle down and dry. We'll see how it works out. And you can see the foam going away as it's drying up, so it should settle down. It was just the aeration from the can. 
Now this was the one that was my ultimate surprise. This was the spray starch in the can. I thought that that would leave it way too soft, but it actually stiffened it up just nicely. If I have to say what was the easiest product, it definitely was the spray starch because you didn't even need a brush. And it was just a matter of spraying it on. I just don't like to use aerosol cans, but I know everybody's probably got a can of spray starch that they don't use anymore. And if you do, this is a great way to use it up. So it's a great way to show you what you can do with this. And it was really easy to sew through this. I didn't have any problems. So, so all, in all in all, I would say that all of these were pretty successful. The only one I didn't like was this Minwax varnish, so I wouldn't use any type of varnish on felt. I think that was just a bad idea, but I wanted to try everything I had because I know that you guys have a lot of things that are similar at home in your craft arsenal, and we all have things around the house that we probably wouldn't have thought of, and I thought it was worth giving it a try because I was already into doing it. So just to give you some ideas of what you can work with, what I was successful with, and if you happen to get that floppy felt, which is a whole lot cheaper, you can actually do what you want with it. It's always good to know, and if nothing else, that you could always add paint to it so you don't have to worry if you don't have the colors you want. Sometimes you get those funky yellows and some weird greens that nobody wants, and now to know that I can paint over it and stiffen it at the same time makes it really much more interesting. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope I gave you lots of information to use in your beading arsenal, and thanks for watching.